Cat. Hey there, Skeletor here. And I be Fat Man. And this is Izzy. All right, today we are discussing Digimon Adventure 02, The Beginning. Which oddly is not the beginning, it is like literally the last piece of the fucking puzzle. It, it is meant to, much in the way that Last Evolution Kaizanu was closing out the Season 1 kids' story, this one is meant to close out the Season 2 kids' story. And we saw it in theaters. We did, that was nice. Uh, God bless Fathom Events because I really love that they do stuff like this. I think they push out all the Dragon Ball stuff too. Mm. I want to say it has to be them, I can't imagine there's a huge market for people pushing out anime films in America, but... No, but if you push out a Dragon Ball anything, people will watch it. That's true. Um, I think le they legitimately have broken every, like, Battle of the Gods set a record, and then every movie that came after that broke it. But this isn't about Dragon Ball, this is about Digimon. So short synopsis, Digimon Adventure 02, like I said, caps off those kids' stories, which if you're not familiar is Davis, Cody, Yoli, TK, Kari, and Ken. I just, full disclosure, I loved it. Like, I... Yeah. Loved this you know, movie. I didn't <coughs> love it, love it, but it was still really, really good. It was a really good movie. I would not have been upset if I had paid for those tickets instead of them being a gift. Yeah, so it basically kicks off, I think it's, I want to say it's like a couple of years after Last Evolution Kaizanu. I was missing something in, like, because I, I, I understand Adventures had a reboot. I don't know what does and doesn't count. I saw season one. Season 2, and then this movie. What am I missing in between? Why do they have cell phone Digimon? Uh, you are missing Digimon Try, and you are missing Last Evolution Kaizami. I thought Try was like alt-universe reboot. No, Try uh, retains continuity. Okay, so I'm missing two things before this. You're missing seven movies, essentially. Jesus <laughs> Christ! Although, Try, which, by the way, I have a video it's an old school zeitgeist hit of uh, reviewing Digimon Try. So if you want to check that out, that's going to be right here. P plug that. That was a good video. But yeah, you're missing Try and the Last Evolution movie. Okay. Uh, you can kind of yada yada Try. Last Evolution was pretty important, and I won't. It doesn't feel like I missed anything <laughs> other, really, other than the reason they have the cell phone digivices and that one scene where they're watching the news and uh, Omnimon is fighting the Aboramon. Yeah. In reality, that that wasn't in the internet, and that threw me off because I've only seen the Aboramon in the internet. I I want to say that was I could all oh, my memory could just be hazy because I watched uh, Last Evolution at a weird time in life where I couldn't really pay attention to anything. <laughs> I could very well be missing something, but I want to say that looked like Revenge of Diaboramon. Okay. When he did come out of the internet in a real life and they had to fight him. Which was a very crappy half-hour sequel to the Diaboramon segment of the movie, but I have fun with it, as I do with really anything that's Digimon based around the first couple of seasons. So yeah. I, I th it's free on YouTube. It's a quick watch. Oh, it it's is. fun. Yeah. Oh. I watched it on YouTube at least. This I'm was watching it after but... this. It's, it's on there. It's only like a half hour. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing that I completely forget about. Most of these movies are generally pretty short. This was a full-length feature, wasn't it? This Yeah, this was like, this clock, it wasn't that long. Clocked in at like an hour, 15, hour 20, I think. Okay. Yeah, for a cartoon, yeah. that's For yes. an anime film, yeah. The anime films are usually like... Well, not even like, that. I mean, like, you look at uh, the Meet the Croods or whatever, you know, anything... Meet the Croods. It, I don't know why that popped into my head first. Yeah, why the crew? <laughs> I don't anime. know. But, look, I'm just saying, animated things, I understand there's a nostalgia thing, you're aiming for the 20 plus market, but like, that's still a kid's movie. Kid's movies are generally 45 minutes, an hour, and a half. I'm gonna tops. disagree to frick with you there, but we're gonna get back on track to Digimon. We'll get too. back on that. In and a I, second, I will yeah. say why I disagree, but either way, this picks up. Uh, I want to say a couple of years after Last Evolution Kaizanu, and it's focused on the O2 cast. This movie focuses on a kid named Louie, who is theorized, theoretically, the very first Digi-Destined of all time, and is supposedly the reason that every Digi-Destined across the world got a Digimon. I am willing, I'll explain that later, I am willing to believe he is correct on 
he is the reason Digidestined exists, but I... He is not the first. He cannot be... He is not... Even, even ignoring his nonsense, Jedi acknowledges there is Digidestined before the O1 cast. Yeah. I'm sorry, continue. Yeah. yeah. And, and O1 is, is very canon, unless you're asking Tamers, but that's a whole different <laughs> story. <laughs> That killed the franchise for me. I love Tamers, but that's a video for a much different time. Yeah, it's a mighty retcon if that holds true, and the movie does kind of go vague with it. But basically, he's it's not a in a very, very brutal, like really brutal for Digimon origin story of new anime character dropped into our familiar S cast. Spoiler alert! Child abuse out the yin yang in this movie. Shit gets dark. Uh, child abuse, uh, mutilation, necromancy for lack of a better word? I'm, mm, I'm not gonna say necromancy, but that is puppeteering on a very extreme level. It's really brutal. Like, I was not expecting this level of brutality. The biggest of abortion I have ever seen <laughs> across the skies of Japan. <laughs> Worldwide. 60,000, I believe, was the number TK gave it. Oh my god. But basically, Louis, through childhood trauma, meets a Digimon named Uk Ukamon. I'm gonna pronounce that wrong the entire video. I um, like, by the way, side note, it is adorable how four year old Louis keeps pronouncing it wrong every time in that scene. Yeah. Nukamon? Pukamon? Like, he just keeps getting it wrong. He, I, did you catch that he called him Yokomon at some Yoko point? Yokomon? Yeah, yeah, he did. I love that. But he makes a wish to have friends from all over the world, and that wish causes the freaking demented Ukamon to make, to literally make Digimon to give to Digidestined so Louie isn't the only one in the world who has a Digimon partner. And that's where the whole, he was the first Digidestined and is the reason for all the Digidestined existing thing comes from. Okay. I will let that slide on the basis that everything Ukamon has done has been from an almost childlike perspective. Yeah. He's getting it done without putting in the work. And as a result, things happen in order to make things happen naturally. In order for everyone to get Digimon partners, an Apoclamon had to come through that wall. He allowed Apoclamon through. Yeah. There's other shit going on I'm not even mentioning, but like everything we have seen has happened naturally in order for Digidestined to come into play. Yeah. Through both the implications of the actual film and through implications made by Louie in general and observations, Ukamon is definitely a monkey's paw. Like he's not. Oh, yeah. He is a, the monkey's oh. paw of monkey's paws. But that's the thing. Until he realized how messed up everything was, I mean, that really wasn't a monkey's paw. His parents were doing just fine. Not really. His dad was dying and his mom was abusive. Well, yeah, but Ukamon fixed that. He wasn't dying <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> he fixed that, but then when they what's the What's the downside? Well, when they actually naturally died, he... Why did his mom die? He puppeteered their corpses around. Actually, that's never discussed. Why did his mom die? We don't know. I I always assumed it was an it was because Ukamon naturally extended their lives where they weren't supposed to continue. Like it's heavily implied that the dad is probably gonna kick the oh, bucket. Oh, I believe very hundred percent. Yes. And I think just through the implication of like the dad was gonna die, and then mom not too long after due to the crippling stress of everything was probably gonna kick the bucket too. I, I will give it this for for like a minorish character who's never given a name in movie outside of Louie's mother. Oh. Uh, the animation on her is pretty well done. Like you see the bags under yes. her eyes, you see the scars on her arms, which is implied that she is physically hurting herself. They in a way. put effort into the artwork <laughs> here. I'm wondering if it's a Final Destination situation where, like, if you don't get hit by a car, you're gonna drop dead. That's exactly later. what I'm thinking. So I think when they both just randomly drop four years later or whatever it is, like, yeah, there's a point they where they were supposed, supposed to, to naturally and they go. It. Like, it is very heavily implied that the dad has. I think the exact oh, yeah. wording she uses is Louis goes in to visit his dad, um, in the when we're getting the flashback of his history, and he goes in and he just kind of like sits near his bedside and tells him about how him and his mom went shopping and maybe next time he can go and she comes in and just like strangles this kid and throws him out of the room and it's like don't you know if you make one wrong move it, your dad could die so i think it's more than 
feasible to say that the dad was probably right there. That makes sense. I I mean, strangling your kid and, and kicking him out, that's a little too far, <laughs> that but that, that whole scene made complete <laughs> sense. Yeah, so I, I, there's the definite implication that the dad does not have long, and I think the mom just naturally, I mean, that happens in real life. If couples that are together for a while, one of them goes, usually the other one isn't too far by like there's a lot of real life cases to back that up so i think the implication was that both the parents were gonna go and then ukuman was like nope they're just gonna live and they eventually have to go right because they were meant to yeah and that's one of those maybe ukuman just kind of did too much that day and just yeah. relaxed a little or something and they dropped dead and so you get like and honestly the louis backstory it's brutal and it's great all of his motivation makes sense my only gripe with both this and the Tri movies is I don't understand why Digimon feels like it can't just have a movie about the characters we know and wrap up their story. Because in both cases, this and Tri, they introduce a new Digidestin, a new Digimon, and the story kind of revolves around them. And while I don't really mind that, like we've been watching these characters for over a decade, so I get that they want to spice it up so you don't feel like you're just watching an episode of the TV show, at the same time, I'm like, you could have just done a plot, especially since these kids were absent from Try. No. I think so. You don't? You no. disagree? Yeah, I disagree. You it, think this could have worked without Louis? It is. It could have worked without Lu Louis. In this situation, is a MacGuffin. We don't yeah. need Louis specifically. Right. They are an ensemble cast, and even when we look at the O1 cast, it really focuses more on. Ty, Matt, and one or two other characters. Like Sora has a nice arc in there. They get arcs, but there. it's really just all about Ty and Matt. And with the, the O2 cast, they don't seem to want to have to bother with picking and choosing who they make something for at this point. Even though it would clearly be Davis and Ken, I feel it, like. Oh, and yeah. it kind of what really everyone I mean, else... to an extent... Yes, but when you look at their Digimon, like if you're gonna if you're gonna be showing someone on screen the most, it makes sense it would be them. And in fairness, everybody takes a backseat to Louie in this movie, but if you had to pick a runners up, it's definitely Davis. Davis and Ken. Yeah, hundred percent. Wormon was putting in the work. That was awesome. Which by the way, can I also just throw this out there and I am I apologize because I'm usually these videos are definitely more impromptu than hundred percent. There is no script here. Yeah, these are way more impromptu than my scripted reviews, so I don't have the names ready in my head. Um, but mad props to the voice cast, because they did bring a lot of the original people back. And off the top of my head, who I was able to count, and I, my apologies to these people for not knowing their names, but Davis, Ken, Vimon, Wormon, Padamon, and Hawkmon's original VAs all return. And I think maybe Yoli as well. So I'm not 100% sure on that one. To add to that, uh, the new voices are good. With two exceptions, in my opinion. Armadillomon's voice is Thank you! fucking grating. Oh, oh my, my god. god, okay, so normally Armadillomon's got himself he has a little accent. southern drawl. Come on, Cody! In this, in this movie, they decided to turn him into some kind of gremlin no. monster. Worse than that, he was like, Hey, you can't do this as me, Cody. This is my... I'm like, oh, God, what? Why? What is this? Why? I was wondering if, like, that was, like, what his Japanese voice sounded like or something. Yeah. I don't understand you know what? No, why they the... made such a, a horrible choice. The English dub has used that voice before. That exact same voice that... Oh, look, I'm such a cute man at Digimon. When? I, I cannot think of an example off the top of my head. They've used it before, though. Oh, that's for his, uh, but his it's, in-training. It's, yeah, yes. That's the, that's the uh, voice of his yeah, in-training. Um, no, uh, it's... Uh, fuck, fuck I, I know this. Hold on, hold on. It's like in the Motimon realm. Yeah, it is. It's Motimon. Uh, Tentamon's in-training. Yes, 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 yes it is. Now that, that, but it's Armadillomon now, and it just doesn't work, because it's mostly used for a baby or in training forms where they're cutesy and useless. But uh, not just that, like, the voice <laughs> just doesn't look like it fits. It's grating. I would have much rather had Redneck Armadillomon. Yes, I would have loved that. Why didn't we get that? Are, I, was this some kind of, oh, it's offensive kind of thing? I don't think it was an offensive deal. I think it was, like, as these movies go forward, especially in this day and age, I think they try to more... You know, back then, like, nobody knew how to 
dub stuff from Japan, so they could go silly over the top. Fuck, look at the One Piece dub. Like, that's full mm. of ridiculous. They become, because of that, they become nostalgic. So, like, I get it. They wanted to go, like, yeah, why did we give them, like, Southern Texas voice? But, I mean, Armadillo, I love the, I liked his voice. I thought it suited him, like, yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Like, I love that, Cody, you could stay in there all day, but we gotta do, we gotta, we Don't gotta worry, arm Cody, I'll protect you. <laughs> We gotta armor Digivolve and get to helping our friends take down them dark towers. Like I like that suited him. It was yes. good. He was he's a bigger Digimon. He, I like the more hearty kind of draw. Yes, that made sense. This this is grating. So I'm sorry to whomever is voicing Armadillomon, but it sounded like holy. that voice should have been coming out of a goblin. Yeah. And again, like literally Motimon from the English dub, that's the voice they decided to give Armadillomon. Besides that. Everybody's great, and this isn't something I cut. Actually, this is usually a negative for me in most anime type anything. And I get that it's part of like the cultural zeitgeist. Uh -huh. Ah, uh -huh. he said the thing. Tie it in. But I, I usually, generally, cannot stand when they have these big, over-the-top expressions. But th they nail it here, like Wormon especially. I, if you can find a screenshot, send it. But it's right in the beginning when they're showing the montage of. We're catching up with the O2 kids, and Ken is surrounded by like all the girls talking to him, and Wormmon's on the chair next to him, just squi- That yeah, was such it, yes. a great, like- Yeah. I legit, legit- I know you're full of shit. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I legitimately, like, guffawed. Like, the ha is followed by the guffaw. Like, I was f***ing enjoying this I'm, Yeah. This is funny. That, that was good. It, it, it- Ignoring all the dark child abuse nonsense, the movie had a beautiful welcome back to O2. It kind of really video. did. Like that, that was nice. It that was really fan service. Did. There was a lot of and, fan service, and honestly, and not in the cheesecake way. Honestly, it honestly it helped me like the O2 cast more. Like I always liked them fine, but specifically, if you would have asked me like five years ago, who would I have picked outside of TK and Kari, obviously because they were in the first season. I'd say, yeah, I like Ken and Cody. Everybody else kind of sucks. Oh, uh, um, Davis was awesome. I did not like Davis for the longest time. I love him now. And I I always liked all the partner Digimon except Hawkmon. I, I don't know why. Don't ask me. I, uh, no, no, he's not fun. He's, I don't understand. He, he doesn't have a great personality. No, he's I, got a voice that makes up for his personality. I, I was just gonna say, I'm like, for some reason, I love it. Yeah, Lee, are you ready to digivolve? Yes, like, I love the, that the voice for some reason. better from an owl than a hawk. I don't know, it just, it always, it, it always made me laugh. But, after re-watching the anime somewhat recently, and then this movie, I'm like, I, like, I was legitimately pissed they weren't in Try. That's how much I grew to love the O2 kids. Where, like, if Try had come out when I was younger, I'd be like, oh, thank God these guys aren't in it. But watching it as an adult, I'm like, hey, where the hell is the O2 cast? It looks like he killed them off right in the beginning. It did. And then we don't hear anything about them. This movie, by the way, since we're on the topic, the humor is actually really funny. Like, it got more than a few laughs out of me. Uh, I don't... And specifically, Digimon can be very, very hit or miss with running gags, but... They had two in here that I laughed at every time. Every time Davis and Vimon talked about making ramen, that yeah. got a laugh out of me. I, I didn't get a laugh, but that that hit the hardest. It was that, cute. Yeah, yeah. I, like it at, was cute. At yes. worst, and I think that's a great way to describe the humor in general in this movie. Like at worst, it's cute, and like at best, you're legitimately laughing. The other running gag, even though it happened three times and they rarely changed it, I laughed every time. The police. The police. Yeah. And they was like, "How did they find us?" And TK. I'd be more amazed if they didn't T find us. TK says some variation. I'll give this like long spiel about we're flying around with these giant creatures and just got a guy from falling off Tokyo tower and it was on the news i'd be more surprised if they didn't and that like that yeah. was great every that, yeah. that was pure dopamine every time that was a little bit of fourth wall break like, <laughs> it was yeah honestly like that should make sense tk is right that that makes sense how how would they not find you but also like <laughs> normally in an anime or something the police wouldn't show up there's no, no. repercussions for your nonsense speaking of fourth wall breaks i remember us turning to each other in the theater and pointing out a fourth wall break two seconds before the characters in the movie pointed it out. So, like, early on, the, you know, the giant digi egg appears over the tower, Louie's going up there, we don't know anything about him yet, and he falls off. And our cast is watching this, 
They're like, oh, we gotta help them. Time to Digivolve, guys. And Vmon and Wormmon Digivolve, and the Stingmon and X Vmon. And then you cut back to Davis and Ken, and they're like, right, here we go. Then they DNA in new. Uh, Pyeldramon, and me and Skeletor turn to each other and we're like, isn't that a bit much to catch yeah. one guy falling off a tower? Turn back to the screen, and I, I want to say it's got him. I'm like, isn't that a little flashy just to catch some guy falling off a tower? Yeah. And I'm like, okay. Stingmon literally did this once by himself. <laughs> yeah. And, and then, then like, later, like, 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 isn't it a little flashy? And Panamon's like, yep, but it looks cool though. And I'm like, oh, see, I... And they did, you know that. what, they give everybody new animations to the point where everybody has to transform once on screen at the same time in that kind of like multi-grid montage just to show you there's new animation. Yeah. And the music threw me off. I just, I'm going to chalk it up to this is a special event movie music, but the fact that they digivolved without that, yeah, what you're hearing right now, that really threw me off. Although in fairness, they had that in the beginning montage, you can hear it in the background a little bit. It wasn't I like, didn't pick it up. I did, but very briefly. It wasn't like forthright. But. Okay. Well, no, that's alright then. But still, that I, threw me off. The music is nice though, and I swear to God, I've heard that in a video game or something somewhere. It, it's playing right now. You hear that? I don't know what that is. We're not in editing, so I'll have no idea, but I would probably know it if you played it. Yeah. There is also, I'm not going to spoil every joke for you, but there is a really funny one between Davis and Ken later that got like an audible laugh out of the entire theater and it's including getting the guy in front of us to, to, okay there was this dude in front of us he was fun he I'm no I'm not I'm not really talking <laughs> I'm only talking a little bit but like when the movie started all I see is hands throw up in front of me <laughs> yeah and you can bet every time something happens. Oh yeah, the first Digivolution. Oh, 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 the opening montage. Oh, if a familiar theme kicked it. Oh, <laughs> like, he was really going at it. He went, my man was into it, and you know what? Good for him. You know what? He was on his own, no friends, no girl, nothing. On his own, enjoying life to the f***ing fullest, watching his Digimon movie. Yeah. You cannot fault that level of hype and enthusiasm. I might normally, but Digimon is such, <laughs> yeah. I might yeah. Digimon is such a niche thing, <laughs> I can guarantee everybody in the theater with us. Was doing that on the inside. Yeah, yes, he everyone was just in there. that on the outside. Was a Digimon fan. Absolutely. You wouldn't pay yeah. for a ticket to go see that. Unless, no, that's not yeah. one of those. And considering it's an anime movie, yeah. I can't use the, yeah, I was dragged here by my boyfriend excuse because... Let's be honest. Yeah. It's, yeah. Hundred yeah. percent. There's there's no chicks coming to there's no chicks. I'm yeah. sorry I'm making a stereotypical joke. No, there were some females in the fans. audience. Um But I think they were also Digimon fans. You had to be I don't know, these things don't really like this isn't the type of movie where you drag a significant other to. No. Like you have to wanna see this or you don't. There's not and, and that that was nice. Like, the fact that I could pretty much tell everybody in the theater was a Digimon. Yeah. In a way, like you just said, I kind of like that about these things. Like, if you're yeah. not... It's something that's like you can tell everybody here has been invested for... Like, you, I couldn't blame you, that guy for freaking out in front of us. Like, normally I would talk shit. I... If I'm that was like a, a normal little bit of fun movie? just because it's so weird, but like you could tell he's really a Digimon fan, right. just like everybody else. And it, truth be told, for a lot of the evolutions and like callbacks, I was doing that too, just in here. Not. I don't want to show my family how <laughs> f up I am. <laughs> Not visibly in front of everybody, but on the inside, I was I was cheering. And I was shucking up your alcohol too much. <laughs> By the way. So I snuck a bottle of booze into the theater, right? <laughs> and I, I'm using my Digimon Vital Bracelet BE to uh, keep track of time. So like I'm not, you know, chugging too much. I'm spacing out my shots. And that is the only reason I realized just how few and far in between the fight scenes in this movie are. Yeah. Like, this story is so good, I didn't even realize there's barely any actual action. And, and in fairness, there's really not, that's one, you know, actually, I haven't really read anything online about this yet, usually oh, I'm I... am staying away from spoilers. Usually I give it a week. Oh, I didn't read anything beforehand, but now that it's out, I, I 
I, I, didn't didn't read any, I haven't looked at anything yet. <laughs> no, outside of the trailer, I went into this completely blind. And yeah. by the way, more movies need to do this, especially... Oh, this is gonna sound Throughout so... the first four this minutes. Is, this is gonna sound so pretentious, but like... Especially movies in the U.S. Especially in recent years, like... The, like, they'll spoil the whole f***ing movie in the trailer. Oh my god, yes. The okay. fact that the trailer of this didn't even show you Ukuman was... Oh, what a great call. I like that, because if you watch the trailer back, it, like, it'll show you the Digi Egg about the edge, but you yeah. never see, and I thought that was a great touch. Yes. Because when he did pop up, I was like, what the hell the is hell this? The hell is this? Thing? Yeah, oh my god. And this mother says that he, he can do everything he does because he's connected to some greater being. That we I never like find out what that was. That needs to be, I feel like that was purely throwaway line set up for a different movie if they feel like maybe yeah, if they feel like doing something because this is theoretically the last o2 movie or the, yeah the last uh, movie in this actually this is theoretically the last movie in our og digimon timeline um, it, it, yes the furthest along unless you count the final episode of o2 which technically skips over all that shit and just goes to ken and yoli get married which was actually something I had a question on. They seemed like they weren't dating yet in this movie. I thought the opposite. It seemed like it was implied that they might have been involved. In I kind of thought so until that final scene, it, which it seemed like it almost seemed like they were officially kind of going out for the first time. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, you're right. Okay, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Oh. That, that, that makes me think that this movie takes place not too long, like maybe a year and a half before. after the show ends. Yeah but before that end recap kind of thing. Because we don't really get anything on the OGs, but they are, like, we the brief glimpses we see of them. That pissed me off. We only saw Ty and Izzy and, Izzy and Kari for two seconds as a baby, but we're not gonna count that. Well, Kari's, like, you know. Exactly, we're not gonna count that. It makes sense Ty and Izzy are now working for the government as Digimon specialists, liaisons, whatever. The fact that they had to relay messages through someone else from Izzy instead of just having Izzy just be like, hey, by the way, you know, I'll just show up for why? two seconds. I don't get why you and I think it was my brother or maybe one of my cousins that went with that said that too. And I'm like, why did you expect them to be a part of this? Because it's this, called Digimon Adventure I'm, 02. I'm willing to accept that the majority of the original cast won't show up, but Izzy was always their like go to guy. That's true. Yeah. I and maybe I don't know who else he voices. Maybe they just didn't want to pay him. Maybe. Izzy was the one character oh, he was. Oh, no, well, she's, she's dead. Oh, well, okay. Didn't realize that was a woman, didn't realize they were dead. Jimmy Neutron as well. Oh, really? Mm. I believe she's, I'm like 99% sure she died somewhat recently. Okay. But yeah, she's she's gone. But yeah, back at, anyway, back on track. But yeah, the action, very few and in between, and it's almost weird. It's like, it definitely takes a backseat to the narrative, but I almost didn't mind that. It takes the backseat to the point that they go out of their way to create Pyle Dramon. They yeah, they definitely do. There is there is realistically there is no need for these Digimon to go past any of their champion forms. And yeah, and even then. Even then. Even then it's a stretch. Yeah, you only really need one or two of them. You don't need all five, six. When everybody's falling and and Angemon and Angel Woman and, yeah. and Hawkmon show like fine. I get that, that makes sense. They're stronger flyers than the rookies. You wanna catch some people dropping fast, go for it. But after that, there's really no need. That being said though, the action sequences were cool when we did get them. Yes. Yeah, they were they were pretty badass. And I'm literally never gonna complain about seeing any of the original characters on screen, so. I'm just not a fan of Sylphimon's design at all. So really? I don't like Shokumon's design. I hate Oh, Shokumon's. yeah, no, you know what? I hate, I, don't, I hate that one so much, I almost forgot about it. I, li I like Sylphimon. I've always liked Sylphimon. Shokumon always, I'm like, it just looks like a big freaking teapot. I hate this. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't look good at all. It basically just stands there and fires lasers. That's kind of uninteresting. But yeah, I mean, honestly, I like the animation here. The voice works great. The expressions are big and over the top, but in the best way possible. The humor hits. Honestly, there's like one joke that didn't work for me, but almost every time you could tell that they're wanting you to laugh at something, I laugh. And I'm like, this is funny. This yeah. is probably the funniest Digimon 
movie. Like I can't. Yeah, that you know funniest. What? Funniest in a way that's meant to be funny and not funny from the random ass yeah, English lines that were added in. Because they're like if. Yeah, that's what I was thinking if, of. If, if my aunt had a mustache, she'd be my uncle. Is always gonna be the absolute king of terrible. Yeah, if my aunt had a mustache, <laughs> she'd be my uncle. Yeah, Aguman was woke as from way back then. <laughs> Oh, uh, that line is always, that's never gonna, that's never gonna not be funny. That's always just gonna. Everybody's capable of being someone's friend. But what if? What if? Always with the what ifs. What if my aunt had a mustache? She'd be my uncle. She would. I just don't want to go too spoiler heavy on what the resolution is for this movie. What part of super abortion don't you get? <laughs> Like, that was my line in the th like, I looked at it and yeah. like, once they decided what they had to do to save the day, I'm like, oh, we're getting a super abortion, aren't we? <laughs> I, I will also add, like, for as much crap as Digimon has gotten over the years of being a Pokemon clone and of, like, even getting more complaints than Pokemon for, quote-unquote, solving its problems with violence, the resolution was surprisingly refreshing and really really wholesome like it, i won't spoiler it but it doesn't involve bludgeoning something yes it does it, i mean it kind of does it does 100 like, it, it does not 100 percent. yes it no. does <laughs> we, yeah okay we, we dealt with the emotional trauma and we figured out how to fix things now we just need to kill this thing that's what it comes down but to. that's after that's after the that's like the they, last part of it is extreme violence, but extreme yeah, violence but they is not have part to, of it. They have to come up with the resolution first, and they do that, and they do that without violence. All in all, if you if you haven't seen, uh, how are they going to see it? The, it's a very limited time release, isn't it? How are they going? We're, we're you're. Oh yeah, I'm sure nobody on the internet has ever figured out how to get a hold of a movie. That's illegal. I'm not saying anybody would ever do it. As far as who I would know, do that? As far as I know, we wouldn't steal a car. You, why, why is a movie any different? You don't know me. Maybe I would. <laughs> also depends on the situation. By the way, you know what? I, I know we've we've rambled a little bit here and there. Oh, we've so gotten much. sidetracked here and there. We got sidetracked a that lot. That is because we legitimately just really love Digimon. And it's our YouTube channel, damn it. If not this avenue, what avenue are we going to talk about? There's only so much we can do talking to it with each other off camera, and we will, and we're still yes. gonna, but it is fun to get on camera and talk about Digimon, and it's always gonna be fun. Alright, well, for Zeitgeist OG, we have been Fat Man and Skeletor and the guest cat Izzy. Um, yeah, we, we really enjoyed Digimon Adventure 02, the beginning. If you've seen it, drop us a comment, let us know, did you enjoy it? Um, I, from the general consensus, not that I have a big sample pool because it was like the nine people I went to see it with in theaters, but everyone, it was pretty positively yeah. received on our end. Oh, and hell yeah. The people in the theater seemed to love it. Let us know, too. What is your favorite? I'm curious because I haven't seen all of them. I've seen almost all of them. What is your favorite Digimon? Um, and if you say Runaway Locomon, you can just go ahead and hit that unsubscribe button right now. Uh, go see this movie. What is your favorite Digimon movie? What is your favorite Digimon anime? Do you like the O2 kids? And what do you want us to take a look at that is even tangentially Digimon related next? Uh, we are Fat Man and Skeletor and Izzy. This has been Zeitgeist. Thank you for watching. We will see you next time. Deuces.